believe someone Someday Someday you You will believe someone And that day We'll decide What you become for the rest of your life Who Have you decided To believe Every word that you've ever heard will grow like a seed over time and the word that you believe will either set you free or forever enslave your mind tomorrow has been decided your future and what will be you created all your tomorrows when you decided who you would believe someday you you will believe someone someday decide what you become for the rest of your life who have you decided to believe I love sitting at your feet I love hearing what you say I love knowing all desires I'm so pleasure to obey your favors like a sunrise driving all my nights away I love sitting at your feet Holy Spirit every single day I love sitting at your feet sitting at your feet a friend of mine a lawyer from Brazil was in my home a few days ago and talking to me he has four children precious wife a jewel of a wife and I told him I says out of your four children there will be one who wants to hear your voice he said, that's number two he knew immediately which of his four children wanted his voice in their life. Ruth said to Naomi, your people be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you go, I go. I want to be close to you. Elisha said to Elijah, I don't want to be away from your presence. Your voice matters to me. There's a number of people in your life some want an endorsement. Some want your approval. Some treasure your favor. Some want your advice. Some want your, some want your uh, opinion. Out of all of your life, there may be three or four people that want your opinion about everything. That's your Peter, James, and John. That's your Peter, James, and John. What do you think? What matters to you? Today, my focus is seven things that should matter to a man. Teach me 
how to please you. Show me how to pleasure you today. Let me live in your presence that comes every time. How to please you Show me how to pleasure you Today There's two kinds of people on the earth Those who want your approval And those who want to do What you love Let me Live in your presence That comes Every time I obey Show me Show me How to love you Show me Holy Spirit How to love you you joy show me what brings you joy Holy Spirit of God show me how to love you show me show me Holy Spirit how to love you Show me, Holy Spirit, how to love you. Your joy matters to me. Your joy matters to me. Show me, Holy Spirit, how to love you. broken make me healing oil bring me bring me the broken Lord that's what you've made me for let me lift up let me lift up the fallen the tear stains away bring me bring me the broken how do you know your assignment whose tears impact you whose joy matters to you your assignment's always to a person or a people Place me, O oh Lord, where you want me to be. I was 36 years old. I was fasting three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I did that for two years. I was running five miles a day every morning at 5.30. But the fasting made me very sensitive to the wisdom of God. I learned so much. I don't want God's love as much as I want his in 
enjoy me. I want him to enjoy me. God has millions of people around the world, but I want him to enjoy me. That's why I started at that time spending four hours every morning. Now I'm at three hours in his presence. This morning I got up and I was singing. God is good. God is good. And I'm so thankful. God is good. So good. And I'm so thankful. God is good. God is so good. And I'm so thankful. He makes the mountains move. He makes the sea so calm. My God is good. My God is so good. And I'm so thankful. I got up singing that song this morning coming. And the Lord kind of whispered, are you aware that I love you singing to me? I've never thought much of my voice at all. I don't have a singer's voice, but I've got a singer's heart. I've got a psalmist heart. What are seven things that should matter to a man? What is wisdom? Recognition of difference. Difference in people. Difference in an environment like Esther did when she delayed her meeting with her husband. Difference in gifting. Wisdom is recognizing a difference. It's what made Joseph see the difference in the morning in the prison when the butler and the baker woke up weeping. It's why Ruth stayed close to Naomi. She saw difference. It's why Elisha said, I'm not leaving your side. Elijah, you have what I love. I don't want to be away from you for any reason. Wisdom is recognition of difference. Honor is the celebration of someone's difference. Understanding is knowing the value of their difference. My dad and mother had seven children, three sons, four daughters. There was a reason. I love being around my father. There was a reason I wanted my mother to talk to me. There's a reason I met with my father every morning for prayer, just him and me. For years. There's a reason every time in prayer I would hold a microphone, a tape recorder, and say, Daddy, just talk to me. Tell me everything you know. You say you taped your father's conversations. Oh, yes. I wanted to see what he saw. I wanted to know what he knew. What you don't hear, you will never know. What you don't hear twice, you will never remember. What you don't read, you will never know. What you don't read over and over, you will never remember. There will be somebody in your life, somebody in your life that wants to know your opinion of everything. And that's your Elisha. That's the roof that wants to stay by you. It's not that others don't like you. It's not that they don't want to be around you. But there's a Peter, James, and John. At 78 years old, that's my thoughts. I only want to be around my Peter, James, and John. I don't need to reach the world. If Billy Graham couldn't do it and Oral Roberts couldn't do it, Mike couldn't do it. I want these years of my life to be around the Peter, James, and John. What are seven things that should matter to a man? It seems like everything is important. The plumbing is important. The leaking roof is important. Birthdays, 
anniversaries. But what are seven things that should matter to an uncommon man? Number one is the approval of God. The approval of God. The greatest thing my father ever taught me was the fear of the Lord. We had prayer twice a day, every morning, every night. That came from my father. Many times I stop and think, if it wasn't for the teaching of my mother and dad, what would I be? I sure wouldn't have been a preacher. No telling what would have happened to me. But my father taught me that the approval of God mattered more than the approval of a thousand men. How do you get the approval of God? One way, obedience. How do you know what to do? Read the Bible. God considered his word to be his wisdom, Deuteronomy 4 in the writings of Moses. Number two, conversations with God. God's already given us his conversation in the Bible. That's his conversation. He don't have to talk here and talk here and talk here. God has given us his conversation in the Bible. Takes 56 hours to read it through. Three chapters a day and five on Sunday. Highlight what you memorize in red. Highlight anything financial or prosperity in green. Highlight in blue anything about the Holy Spirit or his wisdom because he said always wear something blue to remind me of the covenant. That's the purpose of the color blue is it's to remember the covenant with God. Anything you'd like to know more about, highlight in yellow. Anything that you want, particularly for your assignment, do in purple. It's the kingly anointing color. Three, conversations with those who can mentor you. Mentorship is immediate impartation of wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the mistakes of another. Mentorship is learning without the season of waiting. Mentorship is learning from someone you trust. You have to have conversations. They're the birthplace for hope, the birthplace for correction. Conversation can avoid a thousand mistakes during your lifetime. Solomon said in Proverbs 1.5 that a wise man's a listener. What should matter to a man? Your reputation for integrity. Your reputation for integrity. Don't lie. Don't lie. The snake nature is in every bloodline. It's in the Murdoch bloodline. The snake bloodline The snake DNA is in every single church. It's in every single ministry. It's in every single family. Don't be one of them. Be straight. Be pure. Integrity has an unending reward. Be real. Be genuine. What should matter to a man? Financial wisdom. Financial wisdom. There are 10 things I pray every day in the area of money. I ask God first for financial correction, financial discipline, so I won't spend money too quick, too fast. 
that I would research before I invest. Financial protection from crooked people. One day you'll be in a legal court and there will be a crooked judge. There may be a crooked lawyer and you're going to need the protection of the Holy Spirit from the thieves and embezzlers of your money. Everywhere there's money, there's a crook trying to get it. Every single day of my life, I ask God for financial wisdom. Don't let me misspend what God's given me. Let me be careful. Anything over $200, I want five different prices from five different companies. Five different bids. I beg for that. I've had to beg for it to get it. I ask God for financial favor. I ask God to show me where to sow, where to give. You'll know 25 preachers. Every one of them needs some help. I understand that. I can't give money to everybody. There's not a week goes by that somebody doesn't reach in my pocket. People I don't even know. Write me long emails. Nothing's wrong with them asking. But something's wrong if I don't study the soil before I sow. Seven things that should matter to a man. Mentorship, I've mentioned. The willingness to be corrected. A millionaire preacher worth millions and millions owned 10 TV stations. I spent many hours with him. He told me one day, I said, how do you handle your mistakes? He said, Brother Mike, I've made many mistakes. He had jets flying all over the world. He had a big ship. He didn't like for money. But he said, I've made many mistakes. But thank the Lord, none of them have been fatal. Seven things that should matter to a man. The approval of trustworthy people. The approval of trustworthy people should matter. Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the teaching today. It's rich, it's life-changing if we receive. Bless my partners today who are sowing seeds to help me preach the gospel. Amen. I'm asking the Lord for 12 people in the next 30 days to sow a $1,000 seed. A $1,000 pays for the coverage of one million homes on TV. Thousand dollars is not a little seed. It's a big seed. It's huge seed. It's very, very generous. Very generous seed. I'm asking God for three harvest to you of the 12 who will sow a thousand dollar seed in the next 30 days. First thing I'm asking the Lord for is a debt-free home in 18 months for your life. The second is for three people who will show you favor in an uncommon way, uncommon favor. It may be through the endorsement. I don't know, but I'm asking God to give you a Peter, James, and John. And the third harvest is that God's going to give you a simplified system of rebuilding your life in a simplified way. I'm astounded at the whispers of the Holy Spirit in my life. Astounded. Father, 
I'm asking you for 12 uncommon seeds of $1,000 in the next 30 days. Your sheep know your voice. Father, we have a lot of bills. All of us do. We have taxes. We have insurance. So to put a $1,000 seed in your hand, I ask you to start a year of a 100 bow return. By December the 31st, I ask you for the 100 bow return in ideas, in favor, in opportunities, And I especially ask you for the $1,000 seed today to help me reach a million homes with the gospel. In Jesus' name. Everybody can't do that. But the 12 that can, you know who you are. You know who you are. Brazil is here. Brother Paul Wright, love you, man of God. Stacy, David from Australia. Mayor Harold is here. I'm so glad you're here. He said, a breakthrough arrived today. Oh, I love that. Sherry, Stacy, Andrew, Nadine, I'm so glad. Nadine has a writing ministry, and I've been asking the Lord to direct her steps in all these things. Cindy loves that song. Thank you, Cindy. Carolyn, Fredell, Joyce, Australia's here, Brazil is here, Ghana's here, Jamaica's here, UK is here. I'm asking the Lord for 23 who can sow a $100 seed a month for 12 months. It's going to help me on my radio ministry. I'm on the radio 30 minutes every single night, Monday through Friday. I'll be on tonight, 8 o'clock New York time, 7 o'clock Texas time, 5 o'clock every day, every afternoon drive time in California. I'm on the radio every single day, Monday through Friday, and I'm asking the Lord for 23 people who can sow $100 a month for 12 months. I'm sending those 23 people who can sow $100 a month, I'm sending you 300 books on an e-book reader called Library 300. It's the first 300 books, the first 300 books that I ever wrote. Those who can help me, call 855-5-WISDOM. If you're needing special prayer today, call 888 prayers. Pictures on the screen. I've got 30 seconds left here. 30 seconds left. Can you show the next screen? Those that are wanting to celebrate my 58th year anniversary with a special seat of honor, PayPal is on the screen and Zelle. Feel free to sow the seed that God puts in your heart. My box number is 97, Colleyville, Texas, 76034. Something good is close, closer than ever. I love you, family. Watch me or listen to me on the radio tonight. Bye-bye.